What if I told you that we belong here? What if I told you that the Earth needs us? What if I told you I've seen my people turn deserts into gardens? For tens of thousands of years, native people of this land constructed beautiful gardens all around them. We were active agents in shaping the land to produce prolific abundance. We expanded and designed grasslands and forests for the benefit of all life. We became what the world calls a keystone species, or a species upon which entire ecosystems depend. And our cultures became keystone cultures, refined over time. Now, much was made about the positive environmental effect of the pandemic. As more people stayed home, pollution levels dropped, animals began to reclaim habitat, and the logical leap that many observers seemed to make was that the Earth would be better off without humans. I reject that leap. The Earth may be better off without certain systems we have created, but we are not those systems. We don't have to be, at least. What if these human hands and minds could be such a great gift to the Earth that they sparked new life wherever people and purpose met? I'd like to share important indigenous land management techniques in hopes that they might inform and inspire us today. The first is to tap into and align ourselves with the forces of nature. Why try to control the Earth when you can work with her? In Southwest deserts, native farmers have leveraged the pre-existing topography of the land. They place their fields at the base of watersheds to catch every drop of the monsoon rains and the nutrients that flow down with them carried down from upland soils. This alluvial farming technique requires no outside fertilizers or irrigation because all of this comes with the rain. Another fascinating land management technique is intentional habitat expansion. Why put plants and animals into farms and cages when you can simply make a home for them and they come to you. Indigenous peoples have intentionally augmented grasslands for buffalo by bringing gentle fire to the Great Plains. We would transform dead plant tissues into nutrient-dense ash, nourishing the soil and unlocking the seeds of pyroadapted grasses and medicines like echinacea. Over time, this fire would prevent trees and shrubs from taking over the grasslands and would nourish the soil to generate topsoils up to four feet deep. Many people think that we followed the buffalo when in fact the buffalo followed our fire. A third strategy is to create non-human-centric systems. Why hoard for your own species when well, you can live to serve all life around you? Coastal nations of British Columbia enhance fish habitat by planting kelp forests where the herring lay their eggs. This helps that small silver fish lay even more eggs and both the eggs and the hatched herring fish cascade up the food chain, nourishing so many other life forms, such as bear, salmon, orca, eagles, wolves, and more. By seeding this food web and feeding all life around them, coastal nations have greater food security for themselves because they feed the hand that feeds them. 
These are the types of food and land management systems that Europeans came across as they spread westward. They often mislabeled them as terra nullius, or virgin land, or wilderness, instead of what they really were, living heirlooms thousands of years in the making.